You're listening to the Animation Industry Podcast. My name is Terry, and you likely didn't notice, but last week was the first non-winter seasonal holiday week. I didn't post an episode in the last four years because I was at the Documenta Art Exhibition in Kassel, Germany. This chat is with Justin Roche, a super awesome stop motion and CG animator who has worked on pretty much every stop motion feature film you've seen, including Pinocchio, which isn't out yet, so you probably haven't seen it, Kubo, and Paranorman. And he's also worked on pretty much every Blizzard cinematic short as well, including all the Overwatch and Warcraft ones. Now lately, Justin has become super well known for his ridiculously smooth action figure stop motions, where he's gained over 1.2 million followers on TikTok. Now before we dive into this episode, I have a sponsored message to share with you, and it comes from my friends over at Hue, makers of colorful plug and play cameras for learning, work, and play. Originally designed for teachers, Hue cameras can also be used for creative activities such as capturing hand-drawn pencil tests and shooting behind the scenes footage, time-lapse videos, and stop motion animation, of course. Their cameras have flexible, poseable necks, manual focus controls, and they are compatible with Dragon Frame, OBS, Twitch, Zoom, and many other camera applications. Visit huehd.com to learn more and follow at Hue cameras on social media for news, fun, and giveaways. And you can get 10% off any Hue product from HueHD.com with the special code 10 AIP. That's 10-T-E-R-R-Y-A-I-P. So go check out Hue because they've been wonderful supporters of this podcast for a long time now. And now without further ado, let's jump in. Hi, Justin. How are hey. you? Hey, what's up, man? I'm good. I, I just had a full day of CG work at Blizzard. Well, let's... everything is well. Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> Here it's it's like what 6 p.m. It's like 9 30 for me. Um, I'm yeah. really excited to chat with you because I you were like, how do I say this? When I was first getting into stop motion, like in my bedroom after high school and going on stopmotionanimation.com and like yeah. looking at every single, like literally just YouTube. <laughs> going into brand new YouTube's Google like yeah. history and just typing in stop motion and scrolling oh, for wow. hours and hours and watching everything. You were at the like forefront of like, wow. you know, somebody doing on their own, like super professional looking stuff, which was just mind blowing to me. So wow. here it is like what, 15 years later or something. <laughs> Dude, it blows my mind. I cannot believe, like, I still feel like a total beginner in stop motion. Oh. Every time I work on a project, I'm like, I'm not one of these people. I'm I'm a somebody. I'm a CG guy. What do you, you mean? Know? What do you mean? It's just how my brain feels because because I'm not doing this every single day yeah. of my life. Like stop motion animators are working every day, eight to ten hours as a professional on their stop motion. I am coming in like a day trader here and there. I'll work on a film every once in a while. I'll work on a TV show every once in a while. I do stuff in my personal garage for fun. Uh, but, uh, but I'm not a full-time guy, but what I am is a hundred percent animator. So, uh, regardless of the medium, uh, you know, I'm an animator. So, but, but yeah, 15 years, unbelievable since Gerald's last day and my first yeah. steps, in this <laughs> crazy, crazy medium. So, okay. You know, I don't even know where to start with questions for you to ask, but just <clears throat> maybe I'll just pop them out of my head. How do you, so you're working at Blizzard, obviously, and you, you yeah. CG animator. Do they just yeah. let you go? They're like, oh yeah, Justin oh. <laughs> for a bit, and then he'll come back. And work on no, it. no, they don't do that. I, I basically, uh, the last feature that I worked on uh, was before, uh, before I joined Blizzard was Kubo and the Two Strings. So that was the last Leica film that I worked ah. on. Then I went to work for Blizzard for, I don't know how many years, four, four plus years. And then there was a couple of little things where I had vacations where I got to play on some early production stuff like uh, Wendell and Wild was in Los Angeles for a little bit uh, doing the initial stuff. And I got to do a couple a shot or two there. And then I uh, a few years later, you know, because Pinocchio started in L.A. too. You know, I would do stuff on the weekends to help out or whatever here and there with a few other productions. So they'll be and like, it, hey, Justin. Yeah. Uh, Justin yeah. Hotline. <laughs> can yeah, you, yeah. Can totally. you come in for a weekend and just do yeah. like a uh, half a yeah. shot for us? Exactly. That's exactly. Crazy. Yeah, it, it would be like that. Or I would take a 
you know, like I'd use my vacation. It sounds crazy. <laughs> say, but your kids would, are like, let's go to Hawaii. And you're like, yeah. well, actually. <laughs> yeah. Well, my kids, you know, they're all grown up now. Right. So it's a little yeah. different. But like, yeah, like on the latest uh, couple of situations, it would just be like weekends helping out or a vacation. Like I would I'd be on vacation and I'm like, yeah, I'll do a shot. You know, I'll do a shot here or there. Yeah. So little, little touch. It's like garage work, you know, but the majority of, I haven't really worked on a full production since Kubo. I've been, right. you know, full-time dedicated to, to Blizzard and then my own stuff on the weekends with my family and, and wife where we make, we, cause we make stuff constantly in our garage, oh, yeah. like making short films. We made a couple of stop motion films for Blizzard uh as well and then uh yeah so that's that's kind of how that's worked over the last seven years because i've been at blizzard for seven years so you eat sleep and breathe animation like you don't you don't oh yeah and 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 acrobatics i guess too yeah yeah that that, that too yeah that's crazy no. and and uh, you know I, I knew your whole family's like basically involved but your wife you know yeah. she's yeah. So she's like setting up shots and stuff and then you'll come home and like animate with her and then like yeah i mean i mean what what is more the the process more with me and Shelly or my family members when we make our projects is Shelly makes the sets and uh Shelly will be in charge of puppets like I I when we have our own puppets I sculpt them I'll often mold them uh but uh if it's like a toy project or something like that then Shell will even do the puppets on that she'll she'll put a bolt in the foot of a He-Man character or something or right. a flying rig in the back but uh, yeah, Shelly will do all the sets. Uh, she does all the editing. Uh, and then she often does puppets. And then I do uh, sometimes storyboards. I'll do all the animation, obviously. Usually the photography setup is me. Uh, and then my daughter does the storyboards, our youngest child. And then uh, she's 20 now, but like, she yeah. st started storyboarding, you know, I don't know, when she's like 18 she or was... something like that. <laughs> yeah. She's like comes home from school. From yeah, home yeah. School and you're like, hey, can you actually yeah. storyboard my latest project? Yeah, no that, that, you know, that's what she wants to do. So it's oh, perfect, that. Oh, perfect practice. Yeah. So and <laughs> you're basically like an animation family, like your studio is your family. That's crazy. Absolutely. But, you yeah. know, I, was, I had a different chat where I don't know how we ended up in this, but we were just laughing about like nobody's forefather and father before that uh -huh. were like animators but you're literally the yeah. example of that <laughs> oh yeah for sure for sure like somewhere our, down the line somebody's gonna want to be like a vineyard <laughs> farmer and they're they're gonna yeah. be ostracized by the family for not doing right <laughs> i i think we would be pretty pretty supportive of whatever our kids want but yeah, yeah like they they went their own directions oh, we have two older boys too that uh they're like 30, 30 and 29 wow they're uh goodness they're doing all their own things but our youngest is an artist for sure that's incredible oh, i i don't i'm just excited to chat with you um yeah <laughs> okay let's let's you know i have a million questions on the way but let's roll back a bit more so okay gerald's gerald's last day yeah uh what compelled you to make this short film when you were working in cg you just wanted to get into stop motion and like even even your experimentation when you were doing like when you were first experimenting with things was like super high quality. The puppets were like, you know, fully realized puppets uh, and everything. Like, so how do you, how, what was your intention with getting into this different form of animation and starting you know, strongly? It probably hasn't been talked about on, on a podcast with another animator, but a long time ago, because this is 15 years ago, uh, I had been working in CG at that point for 10, 10 plus years. Right. So and I had come from a, a traditional background. So special effects was what I wanted to do when I got out of art school. I wanted to do uh, practical makeup, 80s monsters. Uh, you know, I wanted to do 2D animation. I wanted like old practical things. So then when I got hired by a Japanese video game company out of art school, I was like, what? Was that Konami like, or whatever it's called? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Konami, yeah. And Konami. it was like, I did not expect that at all. And I grew up playing video games. I loved video games, but I, I, I didn't expect to work at one. I thought I was going to be working at DreamWorks or, or, you know, Fox Studios or some, something doing animation, uh, traditional animation. And CG was just kind of entering the game world in the 95 or whenever I got out, 96. 
So, uh, so things were starting to be like these polygonal characters in video games, really early kind of rough stuff. And uh, because I knew how to use the software and then I had an artistic background, uh, I got snapped up by a ton of companies that were just like flying me all over the place, interviewing me and offering me jobs. So it was just this perfect crest of the wave yeah. where the, the technical ability of so many of the artists were really low. And then this new crop of young artists who could also do the technical side of it, just was whoosh, taking them out and taking over. And I, I, I caught the wave in, and then I started learning about video games and animating these 3D characters. Uh, so it was really, really <coughs> exciting times. It definitely felt like the future, like, you know, like this weird 3D box where you could do lighting and animation and modeling and, build environments and tell full stories. Like I really, really responded to that as much as I liked having dirty hands. Uh, I was like, I can make a movie because that's everything I love is making movies. I'm like, I can make a whole movie in this freaking box. And like, that kind of just blew my mind. I don't need 17 people with a million expensive pieces of equipment. I just need this box. So, so I loved it. I really enjoyed it. But after 10 years of doing it, I was like, you know, I really miss uh, practical artwork. My grandma came over. I always talk about my grandma and she would be like, show me your artwork. Right. And I had nothing to show her. It was all in this freaking box. And like it was on a disc for a video game where I had to play to level seven and fight the boss to show her what I did. <laughs> and like on a system that no longer exists or a codec that isn't around anymore. And I it was really frustrating. I was like, I, I would make a short film every couple of years. It was just something I've done since art school. And I'm like, I'm going to make my next short film is going to be stop motion. I'm going to jump into it. I know I don't know anything about it, but I'm going to do it. I have the idea, very solid. I storyboarded it out. And then uh, I just went to stopmotionanimation.com and I started reading and I started, uh, finding anything and everything I could devouring it uh, on the internet in that early stage, which was probably uh, nine, uh, 2000, maybe around 2000 when I started uh, jumping into that. Somewhere uh, around then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And early like, just, just reading, man, just reading. So I got uh, a DVD called Kathy Zung foam latex making of puppets. And I'm like, Oh boy, what am I getting into? Right. And then, we, me and Shelly sat on the couch and we, we learned how to mold. And, you know, I said, okay, I'll sculpt character. I know how to do that. I went to art school sculpting. I can do that. And then molding. Okay. It's, it's this material. We can do that. I live in freaking, you know, California where there's everything access to like, you know, special effects and molding materials and everything you could ever need. So started learning foam latex and just took one thing at a time. Cause I knew how to animate, even though I didn't know how to animate stop motion but I know the craft of animation. So then after I had a few things, I was able to apply that same knowledge I had on paper, that same knowledge I had in my computer to these puppets. And really quickly, I was able to put out some decent animation, like that stuff you're talking about with the magician. That was like some of the first things I was doing. Yeah, but even uh, even like to get the, you know, the armature right and the the weight because of gravity and like, yeah. you know, the blurs and all that stuff that you use, that's like, there's a certain technical thing you need to know just about stop motion to yeah, even get yeah. those to work versus the technical t animation skills you need. So, but like, I'm just, yeah. I'm just, I'm just impressed that you came out with stuff that if you came uh, up with it now, people would still be like, whoa, who is this guy? <laughs> well, it, you know, it's really rough looking back now for me, but but I, I was, you know, completely smitten with the, the yeah. magic, the magic. I mean, it took so little for me to just be like, oh my God, this is the, per the most perfect fit I've ever had for animation, stop motion. It is, it's perfect. It's a perfect fit. I, I, I grew up watching Harryhausen monster movies. I you know, I wanted at 209 and every kind of monster at, at whatever you saw in a movie that was, was made was stop motion back then. And I, I was so inspired by that stuff. And then just getting down in the world and really becoming this little miniature universe yeah. just fed my soul deeply, man. 
So, so and, you're producing, you produced Gerald's last day. How, how long, I'm just curious, how long did it take you from start to, you know, to three years, out, uh, sorry, three years, three years. That's crazy. Three and years. To, to create like one small film with you and your wife and, and like, yeah. and then, okay. So, and then Leica sees it. Yeah. And then they just ask you to come and work for them. Is that what happened? Uh, you know, I did, uh, I did, uh, we, you know, we went all over the, the United States, and even in places in the yeah, outside of the United States then, right? for festivals. Yeah. <clears throat> and, it, and it did really well, man. It like won a lot of festivals. And, uh, and so like there were some monetary rewards through the festival circuit. There was like meeting all these people and just having awesome dates, going to these places and watching movies with me and Shelly, like ex exploring the joys after you make something yeah. and then scoring it. You know, like we met this amazing uh, a musician who ended up scoring all our films from them, like a real film musician. Uh, and then going through that whole process was pure mad. It was like crack, dude. It was, it was insane to have something you made on the big screen. Cause that was a fantasy of mine to make a movie and someday see it up there while people were playing music to your movie. Uh, but all of that was a huge reward. And then basically there was another film from another animator at like a, who was at one of the festivals and we both won awards. He won one for some, some award with animation. And then we won another one, which was audience choice or something like that. I think he got best animation. We got audience choice. And, uh, and he came up and he's like, dude, you gotta talk to Leica. He's like, I work there. And he kind of gave us the, you know, the contact or whatever information. And then the supervisor emailed us and said, hey, come on up, I'll take you for a tour. And he ended up taking me and Shelly all over, showing us the Coraline sets and and uh, sat us down at the end. We didn't even, dude, I didn't even know it was a job. I remember when he sat us down in his office, he said, so when do you think you'd be able to, you know, come join us? And stuff That's like that. and I was crazy. Like, I was like, what? And I, you know, I'm from LA, me and Shelly, we have a home, we have three children. We have, you know, our kids were young back then. Uh, and then, uh, and I remember we left the office and, you know, me and Shelly are so high on seeing the Coraline stuff in person. And also I've never seen a stop motion production really before. So it was like this huge, massive movie in real life miniature. Like, like I, it, I didn't know buildings were that big that would ever do stop motion and like every stage and the scale of everything and the beautiful puppets. like. It was like, it was, it was a dream come true that I didn't, I just didn't even know it existed. It didn't, it didn't exist, right? Until Travis came along and made like a yeah. feature film like that was such a random circus tent that went up somewhere in the world and then disappeared forever. So uh, we, we went for a walk after that out on the beach and I talked and Shelly's like, you got to do it. You got to do it. And uh, we really considered. We're like, okay, I'm gonna have to leave the family for a little while, and and uh, you know, like I'll fly back on the weekends. I'll do what I can, but like, you got to do it. This is a dream situation. And I, I ended up. I'm trying to think like when because it, it ended up being paranormal was my first film, and uh, I I think I was working for Sony at the time, and uh, and. I told them straight up because I was like, hey, look, I got this incredible opportunity. They bringing up a new person. They chose me and I would love I don't want to leave you guys, but I really have to do this thing. And they're like, OK, we'll come back to us. And we'll hold your spot. So I was like, all right, I'm out. So I went to Paranorman for nine months, moved up to Oregon and made my first movie. Were you and yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That's crazy. When you took this job, was it like, you know, my immediate thought would be, I'm terrified. I'm not going to do a good job. <laughs> and, um, you know, everything's going to fail. They're going to find out I'm a fraud. And then two days in, they're going to be like, sorry. And then I'll have to come crawling back to Sony. Like, how did that feel? You know, what's funny is I feel like that more now. I guess I don't really feel like that anymore. But like, I didn't go in feeling that way. I went in there completely open excited grateful and ready to play i was like okay they like what i'm doing i'm just gonna keep doing it right so 
yeah, I just had access now to the best puppets in the world. Yeah. I had access to, it's only going to get better is what I kept thinking. Like, I'm like, yeah, I, I, I mean, I wasn't cocky, but I had a confidence like that I knew how to animate. I just have to figure it out in this, this new world. Like I never used rigs or winders or, or armatures. I never used an armature puppet before, you know, it was just all wire stuff. Uh, so yeah, it was, it was, I wasn't scared. I was really, really excited and grateful, super grateful too. Did you because any, I, did you have any realities hit you where you're animating and you're like, oh dang, I'm in over my head or like something like that, or just not over, the whole way. <laughs> not over my head, definitely overwhelmed, not over my head. But I, what I did feel was there's a lot. I just don't know. I just don't know about stop motion production. I've been in CG production, right? So like people would ask me things and I would just stare blankly because I have no idea what the answer to this thing is. Like, you know, uh, and they've been working in stop motion since the freaking eighties, you know? Uh, a lot of the people there were like, you know, Will Venton people that had been on, you know, California Raisins and stuff. So, <clears throat> so there would just be like a lot of things like, like my first time going in to talk to the director, you know, uh, and getting notes on a shot, getting launched on a shot. I went in and I sat down and I listened. I'm like, okay, yeah, I hear what you're saying. Yep, 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 yep. And then I left, right? And the supervisor came out after me and he's like, dude, you got to take notes when you're in there, man. Like you got to like little things like that. And I'm like, oh, okay. I didn't know. I didn't, you know, like little, little things. Like I remember I was sitting down to go into what they call edit before my first shot. And there was a guy sat down next to me. He'd been one of those 80s guys. He's, you know, I'm a new guy. He's like, hey, what's your name? I'm like, hey, Justin. Blah, blah, blah. So, so where are you from? That was like what everyone said. Where are you from? And I'm like, oh, I'm from Los Angeles. He's like, oh, yeah, what were you working on? And I'm like, uh, this is it. I was working at Sony. I'm like, I've never done stop motion before. Any. And I remember going like, oh, you know, like, like, oh, <laughs> like, this is your first gig. Okay. Wow. Like, and he was kind of shocked by it. And I was like, wow, I guess that's kind of weird, you know? And, uh, but yeah, it was mainly just process. I had no idea about, uh, and then like blocking, I didn't know about blocking and stop motion cause I'd never seen it outside of 2d. I'd done 2d blocking, I'd done CG blocking, but I'd never seen that stop motion. So I didn't know they, they did layering like that of the process. Um, you know, like replacement faces. I'd never used replacement faces before. It was a brand new kind of technology that was happening. Um, yeah, lots and lots of little things like camera and focus, moving camera. I'd never animated with moving cameras before. That was shocking. I was like, oh, this is different. This is not the same as like, you know, uh, you're still locked off camera where you can just kind of dig in and hit delete. Now you got a whole motion control system behind you. You got to call in eight technicians to move things anytime you screw up, you know? Yeah. Like, kind of scary i know exactly what you're talking about um how okay yeah I, is it an anomaly that you had made this one film and then they just hired you like does that ever happen because you know it, oh yeah yeah i'm sure i'm like sure. it has this whole like internship program and, and like all these other steps to get into as a, like a senior animator but they still you know it's not super uncommon to be like oh let's bring this person in i think what it is is like uh i had started my next film which was dog and Us. Um, at that point and uh or me and Shelly had started it and and they could tell that I could animate I think that's all it was is they could see that I yeah. I understood animation the fundamentals were there and then it was just like hey you know you you're you're building a crew as a as a supervisor right you have to hire all these different slots and we're like okay here's another animator that we feel is a good animator uh he'll come in and they usually put you on the test unit when you join a production anyways at first and they kind of like put you through the the ringer and they're like okay this is how this character moves this is how this character walks whatever and if you're not you know up to snuff they know very quickly so because they they need to have you out of there and on the floor in three to four weeks yeah so and i was doing well on the test unit so it just just happened but i'm, I'm sure they brought in maybe maybe now because it's so competitive uh, there's so many young kids coming out of school uh, that maybe there's less of it, but but I still think if you have someone that just does a kick-ass film that's obvious they can animate, they'll probably give them a shot. 
yeah. in. I want to, you know, just as you're talking, I can tell you're super passionate about this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm wondering, what is the underlying thing you're trying to accomplish with any of your animation, whether it be 2D, CG, stop motion, something else? Because anything I look at at yours, it's, it's you know, it's very well thought out. You've done reference videos. Um, You've, you know, even just like if you go frame by frame, the movement is crazy you know you're doing uh, it to the you're you're always using something that looks professional what i could just go on and on yeah <laughs> i'm just Dude, wondering you know what is that yeah. thing you're trying to accomplish at the end of the day like the the, the illusion of life the illu yeah. but okay I, I feel like that's kind of broad because that's well, what, well the, like, but, but that that's you that's could what accomplish makes... like a, an apple sliding across a table and that's illusion of life. But when I look at your stuff, like when I think of, you're like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. like, you know, that claymation werewolf man yeah. Yeah. or like yeah. the man stuff or mm -hmm. even like the Overwatch stuff where you have the crazy like yeah. Uh, yeah. smoke spinning around and, you know, you, you do so much extra stuff to, to put it, push it over the top every single time. What yeah. is, what is going through your head as like, what are you trying to create I, I think i just get swept up in the magic because like i use that word all the time it's the closest thing to magic that i've ever felt yeah and and when i when i feel a character is alive and that's the illusion of life that i'm calling about they have like weight and physics and thought and muscle and bone and like uh and then all of that is is when I hit play it becomes, you know, it's no longer this dead thing on the table, this dead apple core or whatever, but it, it literally starts breathing. Yeah. I I'm just high as a kite, man. I just get high as a kite. I'm like, Holy shit. That's magic. I just did magic. This thing's alive. Now this isn't, this isn't a toy anymore. And like, there's something so special about that. And then, and, and I'm sure it goes right back to being a little kid playing with my toys as a young work person, this huge imagination, which I had always. And then just the way I would manipulate my characters to make the actions happen, to be able to make that in real life now as an adult is, is it's incredible that I have access to that. And, and uh, so that's it, man, for me, it's, it's really just, just, seeing it come to life like truly come to life is just such a reward and and uh um getting down in there and really jumping inside of whatever i'm animating whatever character it is however that character's feeling is is it's it's really special man it's like I, i've used the word pretend a lot when i they're all like little kid words right like when i've when I'm an adult, 48 year old guy, this old dude who still is able to pretend that I'm whatever I happen to be animating or whatever I want to be feeling as part of the story that I'm telling, like that's such a wild, special thing to be able to tap into because you see little kids, right? They're in that magic space that those magic years where, uh, you know, where, where you can literally become something else or you can really feel like you can fly or you really could lift cars over your head or whatever your, your, your uh, imagination can come up with, man. So yeah. I, can't, I can't believe that I still get to do it and I get paid for it. And I get paid for it. And then I, you know, and like, it's hard work. I know I talk, I've talked about this a lot, but man, it's, it's not hard work. It's not like, fucking digging ditches you yeah. know what i mean or like what my parents do in the medical field you know like dealing with human beings and this this dramatic stuff like you it's 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 so different it's so different i'm so grateful and lucky that i get to do what i get to do and then be compensated for it tell stories telling stories is such a huge privilege and, and blessing and uh and it's it's my second biggest reward besides bringing characters to life it's being a part of a story for the world and for animation history i always talk about that animation history thing like uh i'm doing things like when i make a like a film i'm joining animation history forever right film to me is such a special thing and how it lives 
lives forever. And there's so much content out there, but there's something special about feature films that just feel like it's there forever. And, uh, and I'm part being part of the Leica library. This is just one film, right? Like there's Pinocchio and there's Wendell and Wild. And there's these great films that I got to touch, but like, um, Leica to me is Disney as far as stop motion goes. Right. And they, they have, you have the Disney library that I still have all my VHSs, which is, you know, Bambi, Snow White, Dumbo, you know, Cinderella, Little Mermaid, Aladdin, blah, 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 blah. The huge library of amazing things that that studio has created. And now there's this young upstart Leica, which has been around for 15 years now. And they have Coraline, and Paranorman, and Box Trolls, and Kubo, and Missing Link, and then the next one. Like, we're only on number six. And I got to be part of one, two, and who knows in the future, right? Of that library of film that's going to last forever. Uh, wow, what a magical privilege that is. Uh, and, and creating Stop Mo history, especially because Stop Mo is a niche piece yeah. of, of, of animation history, right? You say, give me all the stop motion films that have ever been made, you're going to have like, 25 you know what i mean like 25 features or something like that it's not that many it's probably less than that honestly and uh like to be part of that holy cow that's pretty special super cool i yeah. what you just said you know uh i love i love what you just said it's it's what i you know what i think about when i'm animating something i think like this is going to live in some form it, whether it be on youtube or online or somebody's whatever forever and like yeah. i want them to you know see it when they're 10 years old and then go back and see it when they're 20 years old and then pass yeah. it on, et cetera, et cetera. I want it to always be like the best thing ever. Actually, I have two comments on this. Sure. Um, the first one is I remember reading on your blog, I think it was Kubo where you like had to rush a shot or something and you kind of, mm -hmm. you kind of regretted it. You yeah. know, did that change what you just said? Did that come from did this like men the mentality, this like, mm -hmm. you know, love for it living forever? How did that affect th those shots that you had to rush affect how you feel about this? Because like nobody, no. nobody, uh, nobody's right. ever going to notice those shots as right. a lay person. Right. But right. like as right. an artist, it like yeah. hurts you to the core. Yeah. <laughs> Every it time does. you see it. <laughs> yeah. It's a knife. It's definitely a knife in the chest when you see it. There's, there's a little bit of aging that happens with like, uh, <coughs> with, sorry for the cough, but that's all right. When, when you see a shot that you were just poisoned by, it was literally killing you to see it in shame when you were at, uh, working on the film, a few years go by and you see how fast everything <laughs> goes past the screen and the sequence happens and you really do get some perspective and you're like, Ah, it's not the end of the world. It's well, hard, when you watch you know? it, the movie's playing and then your shot comes up and you're yeah. like hyper-focused on every frame that you yeah. animated and it goes yeah. by and nobody yeah. knows. Yeah, nobody, nobody saw it, nobody knows, right? So you have that perspective where you're like, okay, it really isn't the end of the world. Um, but at the same time, there's, there's uh, you know, a certain level that's expected, especially at a place like, like Leica, which is, you know, top of the mountain. They say it all the time. They, they are doing it at the highest level that it gets done in this world ever. And it's, uh, there's certain expectations. And this, this is another lesson that I learned, you know, like rushing a shot was you have a lot of pressure on some of these productions to deliver, 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 deliver. Right. And you have scenes that are not delivering. You can't deliver at a high, high rate sometimes because there's too many things going on. Right. Uh, and, and you're also trying to work at like a level or at that really top imperfection is not allowed level. Uh, so that when you, you put those kind of sunglasses on and you're hyper-focused on these little, uh, imperfections or whatever, what happens is I learned you have to protect the shot. And that was given to me by some of my fellow animators. So like, dude, you know, that pressure you feel from the production people. You just got to swallow it and go, whatever. I'm here to protect the shot because the shot lives forever. Yeah. And, uh, and if you let them rush you and you put out something that's not going to represent you well, that's just going to hurt you for the whole rest of your life. Cause they're not going to remember if the shot went 
a, you know, a half a day longer than it was supposed to, they are going to remember if the shots fail, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So, so protect the shot. I wanted to ask you about that because I, I was working on a production last year where same thing happened, rush the shot, rush the shot. So I did. And I just was like, you know what? They're telling me to rush the shot. I'm just going to rush it. And I like, I, I won't put that shot in my reel. Oh, no, it like no, no. stings me. Yeah, it like, yeah. I can't even watch it when it comes on yeah. TV. Like it's, yeah. it's just like, it's, yeah. it's, it feels so bad. And I like hundred yeah. percent, yeah. I wish I could go back and just yeah. like, kind of slap myself and also slap the production. <laughs> right. Like, no, this is right. This is a complicated right. shot. There's like three characters walking and there's a character right. over here. Right. Like, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. gosh. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It, so it, you, it, it's, you, your strategy is just like, you know, swallow this and like, you know, let them come in your stage and yell mm -hmm. at you and just say, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and then like deal with it on, on your own terms. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you're, it's not like I'm not trying. That's the thing that production doesn't always get everyone is trying their very hardest like nobody's yeah. phoning anything in at Leica. you are giving every ounce of your soul to try to get the best shot and it's just a really really hard thing that we do this animation thing in stop motion so uh stop motion is all about imperfections and we are trying to erase them as much as possible so it's a really weird place to be um but yeah i i think what i do is i i you know i bust my ass i work hard but I won't be pressured into mistakes anymore hmm. like that. Like I'm going to be like, okay, this is forever. That's what I say literally all the time. This is forever. This moment that of the uncomfortable feelings I'm feeling is going to be gone tomorrow. This piece of film is for eternity <laughs> and I cannot let it go. Like I, 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 I've, I've, yeah, I've done cutbacks before where I'm like, I just can't accept this. I have to be an adult here and, and swallow the 30 frames I'm about to destroy, yeah. which was so much work yeah. because it's not freaking good enough Dang. for forever. I'm going to remember your words next time I'm, I'm <laughs> sure to rush something. I'll be like, until yeah. the, what is the sun? Three billion years from now. Right, right. Sun. And but humanity's already escaped to another universe and yes, it's taken this exactly. film with them as a historic exactly. piece of earth history. <laughs> yeah, there you, there you go. Yeah. So, okay, so the second question I was going to ask you, which is something I think about all the time. So the amount of, how do I say this? Like the amount of uh, perfectionism or like effort that I know I need to put into to make something that I want to make. How do I say yeah. this? Like if, if I'm going to take on a stop motion project, I want it to, I want it to be amazing. Mm -hmm. And so the amount of effort that I know that I have to put into that to get it to the level that I will feel happy and excited about gets like more and more. So like, I'm trying to say like, I'm pickier now with the projects that I'm accepting. Mm -hmm. Do you also feel this way too, where you're just, Oh, oh like, yeah. So how do you, yeah. so how do you filter yeah. if you're going to actually take on a stop motion project? Is it more uh, of like, this is something I'm passionate about? Is it yeah. like, Hey, is it like, you know, hundred percent? it's, it's all about what it, do I want to do this? Am yeah. I passionate about this? Do I love this? Do I care about this? Cause, cause I will, I'm an, I'm a, you know, I'm an emotional creature, right? I will pour all of my passion into what I'm creating yeah. and is this worth my soul? Is this worth my, that's my a, blood? That's you know a way I mean? more succinct way of saying it. That is this worth my soul? That's exactly how I feel. Like, cause I'm like, you know, cause I told you briefly about my past career. Like I quit my past. I gave up. I sacrificed so much to be here <coughs> taking on something. Yeah. I don't even care about just if it's going to, yeah. you know, dude, bills have to dude, be paid at some point, but dude, we get one chance at this life. We get one circle to, to complete in this ride. And, it, and why would you do anything that you're not loving or, or, or uh, is not feeding you yeah. in, in your guts? You know what I mean? Like I, 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 I just made some really, really big moves this last year because I'm getting older, man. I'm like, I'm 48 and I'm like, uh, I could die tomorrow. Man, I've seen it. I've seen this last year. I, a couple of people that I knew that were young, young people, 31 years old, you know, they're gone forever. And I'm like, holy cow, man. Like, you know, I, and I'm, I'm running into my mortality 
more and more and it's not like i'm unhealthy or anything like that but like no totally yeah. i i i just can't count on you know like so many people want to plan so many people want to uh wait and and that's my nature man i've always been like all right i'm saving this much money i'm doing this and then i'm doing that and i'm preparing and i'm blah 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 and i'm like you know what man i could be gone tomorrow what what if i'm like grinding out for the next five years for something that i'll never experience because i can be gone tomorrow let's do it now let's make moves now and like i am i am making huge moves and it's not like i still don't you know plan and it's still not like i'm not making uh strategies in my life but it's like i want to get to what i want to do with my life every single day as soon as possible and split my days into doing that more than doing the other things or anything else that i don't you know that i'm not really passionate about and and it's man the universe is rewarding it man i'm like Every goal I'm setting is happening. It's happening faster than than I can even get ready for mentally. Do you feel uh, comfortable sharing some of those things here? I, I don't know what they are, but you know, like, dude, I, I I'm I. That's the one thing about like, uh, well, independence. I'll say that I want to be independent. Yeah, yeah, and it's coming fast. That's it's amazing. Coming fast, and when I say I want to be independent, I want to make my films. I, or, and then when I say my films, me and my wife, we write things together, right? We create things together. I want to be a filmmaker. I, what do we do? We make films. What do we want to, we, I want to make a feature film. That's like one of my goals in life is to make a feature film. Yeah. Uh, you don't make feature films unless you make, go out and make a feature film. So I, I've seen it. I've been a part of it now uh, through some buddies of mine and, uh, and I'm, because of social media, I'm getting opportunities that I uh, just couldn't have imagined before. And, and it's just the universe is just saying, you're going the right way, man. You're going the right way. Here you go. Here's some more. Let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. Yeah. I love what and, you're saying. And like, how do I say this? Me getting into animation was me literally, I had the exact same mentality. I was like, you know, when I've made enough money and I have my cottage and I have my boat and then I'm, I pictured myself sitting at my cottage, starting to animate when I was 65. And then I was like, there's something wrong with this fucking picture. Oh yeah, dude. That's... Die before I even get the fundamentals ready. If that's the goal. So I literally in that moment, I just had yeah. this like internal swelling feeling where I was like, you know what? Everything doesn't yeah. matter anymore. I'm starting yeah. fresh with yeah. this goal that I've always had. I'm putting all of it into it in here. You know, a couple a couple of years later, I'm meeting some successes, which is great. But yeah. kind of what you said was, you know, once you start saying yes to yourself and what you want, you know, the universe kind of lines up. But I, I think it's also um, because I have I have a friend who, you know, she just quit her job to pursue fashion, and suddenly she's getting commissions and things. And I was chatting with her. I had lunch with her the other day, and I was like, you know, everybody's always been kind of telling you this, and she was like, who? I've never heard this. But I think it's I think it's once you internally say yes, then all of these outside things that are just bouncing off of you and you're saying no, or you're coming up right. with excuses or what, right. you right. finally start to pursue them seriously and they end up leading you in interesting mm -hmm. places. So, okay, so your, your goal right now is to uh, actively get into a space where you and your, your family and your wife are creating a feature film written yep. by both of you. That's incredible. Yep. What yep. is the, what is the biggest, you know, my, yeah. my immediate yeah. reaction is that there are a lot of challenges to this. What is yeah. the biggest challenge yeah. you're facing right now? And you know, how, how have opportunities been aligning since you, since you. Dude, I, I, I unfortunately can't share with you all the details, but there, there's, there's, uh, financial, uh, rewards that are coming from social media. A hmm. lot, a lot of financial rewards there. There is, uh, you know, it's like that thing, like the more you create, the more you get asked to create, right? Yeah. So we bust our ass, man. We, we create out of our garage a lot. We create short films, little commercials, whatever, little things. And every time we create one of those, more people ask us to create. Um, we have a situation where we've done well as far as in the industry over the years and met a lot of really cool people and they're really interested in working with us uh getting uh it's, i have to be careful of all the things i'm talking about yeah we can like, we can switch topics so you're not you know tempted to say oh, something yeah I'm, it, I'm, it, let's let's talk about this you know state of 
uh, let's call it state of goal or happiness yeah. or whatever in the future. Yeah. You know, what does that look like? You've created this feature film and it's, yeah. you know, it's uh, a rash production. And yeah. like, what is the, what is the success criteria that you're looking for? Is it, you know, finish. everybody loves it. Is it that finish, you, finish to finish. finish. That's that it. Done. We did it. That's it. Just it. The, the only thing is to finish and tell the story that we want to tell. That's it. That's Amazing. it. I, I fucking won the Super Bowl the day we finish our film. That's it. I, I have no other needs. You can die. And, you can yeah. then die. Yeah, man, <laughs> or man, onto man. the next thing because, yeah, you know, yeah. as humans, we yeah. love to. <laughs> yeah, I have, a, I have a lot of As goals. soon as we finish something, our brain is like, oh, not satisfied. Let's, let's yeah. do something else. Yeah, I, I, I love, I know it'll always be based on stories. Like, yeah. Uh, and there's a bunch of different things, you know, like the first film we want to make is a live action animation mix. Hmm. So, so, it, and then the other one that we want to make is full animation, right? A full animated feature. And, uh, you know, I'm sure we'll continue creating together and wow. take, taking small uh, opportunities where they come, you know, and we're, we're getting close to a place where we're not going to have to worry about the financial side of things anymore, which, you know, has taken a long time to get there, but we're, we're getting there. And it's really the thing that's so fantastic about it is that it's through animation, which I would have never guessed that I could get to such a good place and through stop motion animation, which is even crazier. So uh, uh, it's been pretty amazing. And then just, just do just working with Shelly, my wife <coughs> is so fun. And writing with Shelly is so fun and working with my daughter is so fun. And then being able to tap into all this talent now that I know in the world to to come together and, and tell a story that, that we created is, is just, wow, what a thrill, man. I, I'm, I'm so excited for it. I'm so excited. And, and it's right there. I can taste it. I can touch yeah. it. It's like, it's not, it's not a fantasy anymore. And that's the thing, like, it's been a fantasy for a very long time. And it's not that I haven't taken steps towards it, but it's, it's, I can taste it. And we, we just made some major moves that are, you know, just going to put us that much closer. So it, it's very exciting. I'm getting goosebumps just listening to you. That's incredible. Congratulations. Yeah. Like there's, you know, I've, I've had a lot of chats on here. Yeah. I've talked yeah. to a lot of yeah. people yeah. and that is, that is the dream of like 99% of like artists and animators to get to a place where, you know, you can produce your own stuff and it's so yeah. difficult to achieve. And there's so many people actively working towards it. I think it's incredible oh. that you've done this, you know, and, <clears throat> and like, yeah, that's it's truly amazing. I'm wondering you, you mentioned like you know you yeah. have you have the social media stuff and we yeah. kind of chatted about that offline a little bit. Do you have a specific strategy with social media that has enabled you to find you know work and and become successful through through that? Gym? You know, I I was advised. It's such a weird thing. I was advised to join social media just just from a guy I used to work with, a producer guy. He's like, Justin, you gotta get on social media. You're going to do awesome. Just get on there. I'm like, dude, I'm too old. Yeah. I'm like, seems like I, work. I, I don't, I don't do booty dances. I don't like, I don't like how I look. I don't want to put pictures of myself in the world. You know, like everything about it was just hard for me. And he's like, dude, do it. I'm telling you, there's like, you could find a lot of success. And I happened to have two friends that really went big and were able to basically quit the business uh, through social media. And I was like, wow, okay, I'm seeing it firsthand that it can be done and monetized in a real way, like a serious way. Uh, so I decided to just start really a uh, low effort version of, of just posting some of my work. You know, I've done a lot of work over the years. So, and then, you know, you kind of build up a following and then, uh, and then of course people start reaching out to you, right? So you, you hit a certain number in followers or uh yeah mainly i guess in followers like on tiktok it was probably around five hundred thousand. where after that number i really started getting hit by people at, with opportunities hmm. and then uh on instagram it was probably around twenty thousand, twenty five thousand. where all of a sudden all these people were contacting me very regularly uh, offering me opportunities 
And then, um, and then it only got worse. The higher you go, the more opportunities you get. And the more you create, like I said, we keep creating, the more people are asking you to create some more. And uh, so my, my, my strategy was really low effort, but regular. I was posting very regular. I said, okay, every blah, 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 Tuesday and Friday, I'll post whatever it is, Tuesday and Friday. And then, and then with that regularity, I built up the audience. And then, you know, I was kind of all over the place because I do so many different things too. I was like, okay, I'm a video game guy, right? So I'll get video game people, but then I'm also an animation guy. So I'll get animation people and then I'll get stop motion people. And then I'll get uh, stunt people. And then I'll get you know, like all these different kind of communities started coming in and, and building um, amongst themselves. So like I would get different sub genres of followers that would all of a sudden appear from something I created, right? Like horror geeks, right? Would come over when I put up something that was monstrous or, or little kids that like Legos. If I put up something like little kid toy wise or toy collectors, right? Like, just through kind of following some, some of the little things that I just enjoy myself as a, as a fan of, you know, toys or animation or whatever my personal uh, hobbies are. Uh, but then, yeah, it just started building and building. And then, you know, every once in a while that I didn't have to post as regular, like right now I haven't posted in a while because we've been doing some really big stuff uh, in our personal life that I just have not been able to do the next animation that I have planned for social media. Uh, so we're, and you know, we're just going through this big holding pattern, but my stuff's staying really solid because people are like, I know if I stick around here, Justin's going to put up some cool ass shit. Yeah. And I don't, and I don't want to miss it. Right. And uh, so like, it's been really interesting to see like that it's just holding, you know, and I'm not feeding it every 10 minutes. Like, cause people will go through that stuff. Like, you know, oh, this is a d- devour content. Uh, so it, it's a solid following that I have. Uh, so yeah, I don't know what advice I could give on it except to jump in and figure yeah. it out. Like that, that's the biggest thing is the biggest thing is it's an incredibly powerful tool. Yeah. Well, I think, I think your big thing was you were just committed to it. You're like, I'm going to do this yeah. Yeah. regardless and, and yeah. figure it out over there. So like, what are some of the successes? Cause you, you mentioned like monetizing it. So like yeah. one example would be like for Instagram, a way to monetize that is to get leads for projects, yeah. which, you know, turn into actual gigs and then posting yeah. those and then charging them to post it on your Insta, yeah. like, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. But like, are there like on TikTok, do you also get just like money from views and stuff? Yeah, yeah, you, but yeah, yeah. Yeah. On TikTok, you get money for views and then you also get brand deals and stuff like that as well uh you know and you you kind of you know i'm still figuring some of this stuff out too but like i i work as a professional right so i have a certain like i'm not going to take a brand deal that doesn't pay a a higher number right so i just won't accept a bunch of them because they're like we'll give you 300 bucks if you talk about (laughs) you know whatever this is i'm like no that's something yeah. I wanted to ask you about as well, because, yeah. you know, the tier of stop motion that you and your wife are doing, you know, the puppets are crazy professional. You've got the lighting sets, et cetera. And then yeah. the animation itself is like, you know, I don't know if people appreciate like the layperson might appreciate how many hours goes into just like making yeah. one movement. So you're already talking about like tons of production time tons of spare time for you because you have a full-time job how are you even you know when a company says you know we're going to pay you 30 grand for this xyz and you're like well this should actually be triple that like how do you how do you convince somebody (coughs) on the regime of what you're doing to pay fair i think i think at first it just started by like just thinking like i'm a professional studio right so if i'm a professional studio there's kind of rates that are out there and you know you know how much it'll cost for one animator for 12 weeks, one director for 12 weeks, one lighting person, one sets person, whatever, right? So you start to develop an idea of basic professional cost yeah. for a minute of animation or two minutes of animation, whatever it is. So you have that to go on. Uh, and then you have your social media cost, right? Which is basically how much value you as a person being connected to some product bring and i'm not you know i'm i'm 70,000 people right i'm nothing as far as like the power i bring but i do have yeah uh, 
a character that has value to a bunch of people in, in a, I don't know, like in certain communities, I'm a character that is respected, right? Like I'll walk places and people will be like, oh, I, I know you from somewhere. I'm like, what? Oh, you're super me. recognizable. First yeah, of all. <laughs> yeah. So, but so there's something there, there is something to that that has a value, right? So okay. like, I, I can't tell you how many people wrote me and were like, dude, I, I went out and bought all the He-Man characters after I saw your thing, you know, or like, like I wasn't even going to buy them and I just I saw your animation. I had to do it. And I'm like, wow, that's cool, man. Like, that's a power I didn't know I had. I just was doing, I love He-Man I'm from that era and I really enjoyed those toys, but, uh, but it has, uh, you know, some impact. Yeah. So, so I started with just core rates, <clears throat> professional rates. Right. So I'm not going to do this for some piddly diddly do money. You know, like you're going to get really, I promise you're going to get kick ass animation, but I need to be paid professional aids. Then, because that's one of the biggest things, too, man. When I really started finding the community, I was seeing how little money people were charging. And I was just like, oh, yeah, 100%. What are you doing? How are you accepting this? This like these rates that because so many people online are kids and they have no idea what to charge right i I can't tell you how many conversations i've had with people like charge more you're a crazy person uh up your rates you're killing everybody get like if you want they'll they'll learn that once their rent comes comes (laughs) due. yeah it's amazing man how how low some of these people will work for uh but uh yeah, that was it. So I started there. Then, then there was a, an extra cost, right? Because, and it's, it's sometimes, you know, I'll tell you, we get turned down because our number's too big, right? And there's times where I'm like, oh, it hurts a little bit because I was like, I really wanted to work on that yeah. thing. But in the end, you know, like they, they will get something special in, in working with us. I, I promise them and I can show it. They can see it in the stuff that we'll do uh if if they pay our rate so so the ones that are willing to do it figure it out and the ones that can't you know they're they're even though most people might not recognize all the quality differences there's something there totally well it's a difference between like we made something and it's in stop motion and we created this very special piece that you know like the he-man stuff that you created like that was everywhere every account was sharing it oh man you know every stop motion community page had it so cool that's so cool the other you know production that is just put out there so you know but also i i also feel you because i've had a couple jobs where i was like oh this would have been a dream right 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 right. what they wanted to pay me would have been a nightmare (laughs) so yeah, and they need they need to know too. I mean, the more more people will turn them down, or or you like, you know, Kevin Perry has this huge name, right? He's getting paid for that name. He's getting paid a lot, right? So they're like, you have at a certain point if they're getting in on Justin and Shell production, right? We're making all our films and stuff. That rate's only going to go up oh, totally. at, at a certain point. So if they're if they're wanting us to create something really cool and special. You know, it's not that it's not that expensive. Of well, a listen, cost. like I, I come in my business background, yeah. I would have to deal with commercials and stuff. And, you know, you're paying for millions of views. Oh, yeah. You pay yeah. a million dollars for a, a yeah. 30 second production commercial. Yeah. And then you yeah. can go to Justin and, and right. like he's got a million followers on TikTok. Right. Are they paying you a million dollars for that same amount of views? No, actually no. Crack? Like instead of like Nielsen numbers. No, they're like the advertisers yeah. are getting yeah super discount this yeah. the, the brands are getting super discount from social yeah. media like it's it's a steal so yeah makes sense yeah it, and it's coming you know it, it's changing there's definitely things that are changing like the bigger brands are paying for it but there's just so many young people that will just throw something together uh that seems like it doesn't take much or cost much and or they or they'll really will do it really fast and and get whatever they want out of the, the game. So, I 100% know yeah. what you're talking about. But yeah. also, you know, I, yeah. I, on the plus side, there's lots more stop motion yeah. being put out there, which is which is great, and hopefully influencing just the media in general. Yeah, so, yeah. What is? Yeah. You know, I, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh no, I love that. Is, that's one thing that's so incredible. And I talk to when I talk to young uh, animators, I'm like, you don't understand. In the old days, if you weren't good enough to get into Disney 
Hanna-Barbera, uh, DreamWorks, whatever major studio, you were shit out of luck. Yeah, you can't afford a red camera or whatever. <laughs> like <laughs> You're just shit out of luck. You're not right? net. You have your own channel now, every one of you for free, and you can become absolutely rich off of your own work and you'll own it forever if you just create it and you create something unique and special and something that catches like there's so much opportunity now for this bite-sized entertainment, these 15 second blocks of entertainment that any any animator should be taking advantage of out of art school or whatever they're doing. So, so what would you say to somebody, you know, listening to this right now, where they, you know, they, if, whether it be stop motion or not, but they have the, the passion for it. They've got, yeah. you know, they haven't really set up their account yet. They haven't super taken it seriously. Like, and they want to get to a place where you just said, you know, rich yeah. from their own. Yeah. IP. Yeah. Yeah. What would you, what would you tell them to just focus on like tonight, basically to figure, to get on that path? Well, I mean, that's the thing is each each animator or artist has completely unique voice, right? So like, that's the thing that's so cool about uh, social media. The people that I see that are doing animation there, like you have a very unique style in your in your character designs, in your animation. What that does is that makes you a character online, right? So like whatever you create with your design sense has a very specific taste. And like, so you don't even have to be a great artist. You can have these scribbly, crappy little drawings, but if you're doing something that's entertaining in 15 seconds, so that's maybe more the concept, the idea, hmm. it can catch on. It can really catch on. And I've seen them catch on. And like, uh, it's mainly just, I think, get a strong idea, maybe take a little bit of time to build up a little bit of your ammo before you jump in. And then you have to be consistent. Yeah. Just get it, get it out there. If you're being consistent, you're good. Hopefully you'll find an audience. Uh, what an opportunity that is. So yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Like I post, yeah. I think I post like two or three times a year, but like every yeah. time I post, uh, you know, it gets some attention. I got yeah. Yeah. followers, whatever, yeah. but then just, there's just silence and crickets. Yeah. Like my yeah, social yeah. following has not grown at all in like two years because I, I gained 300 followers and then I lose 300 followers. <laughs> like, so it's a consistent. Check this out. The guy who talked me into it, he was proving to me that he could make any channel a success while I, while I was jumping in. He's like, okay, I'm going to do a channel on ant houses, like little ant houses, right? And he became Rob's ants and Rob's ants would do like he put like this psychedelic blue, you know, ant house and he'd film all the little ants and he'd be like, oh, Laquisha's doing this and Robert says this and, you know, Jerome is over here doing this and he would do these silly little things and he put up a little post 15 seconds every day. Got like, I don't remember how many, like 600,000 followers or something like that. Oh my like, goodness. Rob's and 600,000 followers. Yeah. Just, <laughs> just doing that, man. And it's he was crazy. just doing that. I mean, in, it's, in some, in some sense, there's part of my brain that says that's really sad. It's like, what is, like, what are we as humans that we're like, <laughs> they're look, the little kids span yeah, nothing yeah, anymore. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. It's true. Yeah. But man, but, it but if you is, take it seriously, like you said, yeah, like a hundred percent. Cause yeah. you know, somebody, somebody might post, an ant thing and it goes viral and it gets a million views but they're not posting every single day they're posting, right. they're just like right. hey i did this one thing one, one yeah time. you're following the adventures of of charles and bernard the ant yeah throughout his little weird dishes and he oh i put two houses together today what happens oh they didn't like each other when i put in oh my like goodness. pop rocks or something you're, like i'm that. gonna go and subscribe to rob's ants right after this you got me you got me enticed <laughs> I, I i think he quit uh posting but he did it just as a like an example of showing how you just to get you into this he's like listen justin (laughs) Uh, it it was a proof thing for him to be like hey you could really create something from nothing basically and he did i think he got like some sponsorship from ant houses and stuff like that and yeah pretty wild. i I love that story i hope (laughs) you made it up (laughs) no that's real 
That's real. Oh, you can goodness. see him. Yeah. Um, well, I don't want to take all your time, but you know, I, I still have a billion and one questions, but I'm wondering, you know, yeah. as we've chatted about where you've come from, you know, starting off in 2D and then CG and then breaking into stop motion and then, you know, coming on projects every once in a while and then chatting about where you're heading. Like, how does, how does it feel to have this career? And, you know, you're kind of famous in some sense, like, you know, yeah. are you living your best just in animation life is this is this oh man i am i'm so grateful dude i i walk around grateful every day yeah every day every day every day i cannot uh tell you how lucky i feel to get paid to do what i do and and um to tell like i said to tell stories i just feel nothing but gratitude and and <clears throat> And it's it's just it's just so special. Like I I I've mentioned this, I mention it all the time because it's just what I feel, but it's like there's so many people in this universe world that are struggling, struggling, doing things they hate, just trying to survive. Like, you know, and like my my existence, it's not fair. It's just not fair because I love it my hardest, hardest, hardest days. I think I had one of my hardest days ever in animation a couple of weeks ago, a week ago. I was just on a shot after seven years at Blizzard that was like, I couldn't get it for some weird reason. I was just getting put through the ringer on my dailies. And I'm like, what's going on here? I, I was feeling really bad about it and like down, man. I was down. I don't really feel down. Yeah. And, uh, and I was like, the hardest time that I've ever had right now, basically, which is right now, is nothing. It's so ridiculous to, to think that that emotional feeling I feel as an artist is hard. I'm so fortunate, man. I'm so, so fortunate. I get to make cartoons for Blizzard and spend days making characters talk and jump and play and breathe and and you know, be part of working with these incredibly talented people in every medium that I work in, just top-notch artists. And and then I get well paid for it, man. It's like it's just it's unbelievable. I just doesn't feel fair to yeah. the to the world. And I so so when I feel that kind of gratitude uh, run through my veins constantly, uh, you know. And if I'm on a stop mo production, it's even more, man. Sometimes because I'm just like. I cannot believe this even exists that I move little figures to make cartoons is mind blowing and how good it feels, man, how good it feels to be on a set with real beautiful puppets and real lighting and, and real amazing acting dialogue. And like, oh, that I get to, to illustrate that, you know, they put it in my hands. Everyone else leaves yeah. right? the lighting. We Hair, trust you. Clothing, sets, everyone leaves and the curtains close and then I'm there and I bring it to life. Holy crap. That's insane. That's insane. Special but stuff, man. I have no comment on that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. That is, I love, I love how you put that. That makes, yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. hundred percent. I love that. Um, also that you found something and you're pursuing it and yeah and, you know, the work, getting back what you're putting into it as well because part of a lot of artists is putting so much into something and getting you know the pay isn't yeah. good and the appreciation right. isn't good and right. blah 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 so I think that's incredible um you know yeah. I hate to cut our chat short yeah. but yeah. Uh, yeah. you know is there anything that you wanted to share as we're wrapping up for somebody who's who's listened to your journey and uh, you know, they've seen their, your animation and um, I don't know, anything that you think would be interesting to share with them or pieces of well, anything. Uh, you know, like for anyone who, who is listening to this because I'm talking, okay, thank you. First off, <laughs> it's I, me. Hi. <laughs> I, I, I can't believe it. Thank you. But like, uh, um, you know, stay tuned. There's a lot of really cool things I have in the work this year. Uh, and <coughs> and really huge things that are going to be happening next year. Um, and, you know, like, uh, uh, it's never too late to start. Like, I, I do live streams, and I talk to a lot of people who are like, I'm 28. 
is it too late for me to start being? An oh, they're animator? younger than they're like I'm 22. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm like, dude, if you're 48 and you want to do it, fucking do it. Yeah, like, years are gonna pass regardless if you do it or not, and they're gonna. Oh pass man, I haven't done it. So, <laughs> dude, dude, like, do it. You get one chance, one yeah. loop. I'm always saying that. Like, you got to do what you love, man. You got to go for it. You get one chance. I mean, you can always go do something else if it didn't work out, but you got to, you got to try it. You got to try everything uh, in this ride we got or, or, you know, you're not living. So yeah. And go nobody's, for it. nobody's going to give you like, nobody's going to hate you for trying either. Like no. people are scared of what people think or I don't know, just, you know, yeah, yeah. whatever, like just who cares? Yeah, exactly. Who when they cares? find out that 20 years later, you've hated your job this whole time, then they'll be like, well, why didn't you leave? <laughs> or you regret, right? Or you yeah, regret. No. Yeah, yeah. You yeah, just yeah. regret. You're just like, hey, yeah, I, I, I don't know, regret. Like, yeah. just do it. Yeah, well, I think never, that's, never too late. Yeah. Those are great words to live by in anything, if it's animation or buying an ice cream cone, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, I've really enjoyed this chat. So thank you so much, Justin, for coming on. It's been uh, super sure. interesting to finally get to chat with you after yeah, man. creeping what you're doing all these years. <laughs> you've thank been, you. You've been yeah, a big it, inspiration to me, and I, I know uh, you're a big inspiration to a lot of other people. So thank you very much. And uh, yeah, thanks for coming on the chat. Appreciate that a lot. My honor, dude. My honor. And I'm uh, sorry for the sneezy COVID. Smoke. Oh, no. <laughs> no worries. Thank you for yeah. coming on, even though you're getting yeah. COVID. Yeah. That sucks. Um, and if you're listening and you want to follow Justin, you can do so by reaching out on Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, or TikTok. And I'll include all of those links in the description of this chat. And thank you so much for listening. That's all for now. Okay, bye.